Hello and welcome back golf fans. Chris here with Jaeger Bombs Fantasy Sports to bring you another DFS PGA preview. Wanted to bring you one this week because we got a little bit of a, we got two events this week. We've got the Corrales Championship, um, the Corrales Putacana Championship. We've also got the big event, which is the World Golf Championship, Dell Technologies Match Play. Unfortunately, this is the final year for the Match Play event uh, going into the new restructured uh, events and elevated events and things like that going into the 2024 season. This is the final event. It is one of our favorite on the entire season. I love looking at this from a bracket perspective, maybe because it's like March Madness time and everything. Um, but either way, I love the strategies that go along with this. The cheat sheet changes quite a bit. So this is kind of why I want to do this preview video to kind of go over some of the changes. Um, the picks will come later on today. Uh, you will find that on uh, the main cheat sheet as well. I will have rankings, um, and I'm also going to fill out my projected slash optimal. Um, you know, I'm going to pick a winner for every single group going into the quarterfinals, semifinals, and into the final, and kind of give you an idea of how I see things playing out. And you can build your lineups off that if you want. You can also use this tab, which you can see here right now, um, to help build your lineups. It's something we added three, four years ago now uh, with this event. Um, this event goes back to 2016. We're just going to scoot over to the main side of the cheat sheet. It does look a little bit different this week because I have split it up. Um, you're going to see these lines in here. It's going to split up each group of four. Uh, so this event is 64 players. They're split up into 16 groups of four players. Each player, Wednesday through Friday, plays each other player in their group. The winner of each group then advances, and that's kind of what you see on the bracket here. Uh, the winner of each group will advance. And then they will be in um, winner take all, uh, win, loser go home, or win, winner go home, sorry, um, single elimination going into the finals. So it'll be a lot like, uh, you know, like your March Madness brackets once that comes. So that does lead to some, um, some interesting strategies because obviously you're not going to want to pick two players, you know, right off the bat, you're not going to want to pick two players in the same group for your DraftKings lineups, um, even if you're trying to bet it outright. Um, one strategy that I'm looking at is maybe betting one player from each quadrant. And we're going to talk about that here in a little bit too. Uh, this would be quadrant A, B, C is in purple, D is in pink. Um, so betting one player from each of those, hoping that maybe you can, you can really nail down that final four, then the final two, and then you're going to have a good chance to win. I mean, that's kind of the way you want to look at it to build your optimal end. It's not easy as it sounds. Obviously, um, 64 players in the field, anything can happen, um, but that's kind of how you want to build to get the most upside in your lineups. And that's kind of um, so when I first try and build out my DraftKings lineups, I'm going to try and pick a winner from each group. And that's why I use this tab right here, this main bracket tab. This is the main tab that I'm going to use throughout the week uh, leading up to lock uh, tomorrow when we uh, when lineup lock. So like for building my lineups, this is it. So I'm just going to kind of play it out through here. And when I play that out, definitely these four are going to be in my lineup, the ones that I kind of project to see going into the final four, obviously. And then I'm going to try and um, get one player from each side of the bracket to kind of fill out the six players in my lineup. I kind of don't want to do one, two, three, four. There is good. But then if I go here and here, that kind of is giving you three players out of this one quadrant. You kind of want to split it up into each side to give you, like I said, the most possible upside possible. So back to the main side of the cheat sheet here, we've got everything normal. We've got the stats. We've got the current form coming in. Uh, the course history looks a little different. This event with this structure of group stage going into the bracket style goes back to 2016 here at Austin Country Club. So that is the course history that I've got here on the sheet this week showing how many times each player's got through to the round of 16. So through group stage, um, their average finish at this event, their group record, their playoff record, their overall record in this event going back to 2016, and their win percentage as well in all matches. Um, so you can use that for your research tools. Over here, we've got the fan share information as usual. Um, that just started coming in that information this morning. So you're going to see more of that um, as the day progresses and into uh, tonight as well. So we'll be talking about some, maybe some ownership pivots on there. Um, as well. Um, so you can check all that out here. But some of the things that I really wanted to go over today was the group and quad research. Before we get into that, if you're new to Jaeger Bombs Fantasy Sports, you want to get a copy of this cheat sheet, a copy of our Corrales Punta Cana Championship cheat sheet, which is right here. Um, this is your regular cut event, top 65 and ties. A um, little bit weaker of a field, obviously, with the top players in the match play, um, but definitely a good event 
And if you're playing one and done, most sites have multiple uh, multiple picks. You're going to be making two picks this week, so definitely head over here. Going to be highlighting some picks on here for the week as well. But before we get started um, into some of that research I was talking about for the match play, if you're new, head over to patreon.com slash This is where we're going to be able to get a copy of our cheat sheet. PGA package, $14.50 a month Canadian. That's $10 a month. American is going to get you the PGA package, access to our Discord, uh, cheat, weekly cheat sheets, picks, rankings. Um, we have multiple coaches in our in our chat as well. Um, you're going to see all the information on the cheat here as well. Or $20 a month gets you access to all of our sports. And right now we are running 12 plus sports um, right now. And there is that all sports package. So you get access to absolutely everything we have. All right. So for this week, looking at, you know, the groups and how we want to, I talked about some strategy, make sure to also head over and check out uh, Dane's article. We posted that in chat. We posted it on social media. He breaks down his strategy uh, a lot more in depth and how he builds looking at, like I just talked about, picking uh, not multiple players in each group or even this little area that'll go into the round of 16, players that won't face each other in the round of 16. He talks about the whole strategy of this week in his article, so make sure to go check that out as well. That is free for everyone. Um, at Jaeger underscore bombs nine um, is our Twitter, so you can go check that out. Or at Red Red Stag 007 is Dane's handle on Twitter as well. Okay, so looking at that bracket, what I did now was I went over and I created a new tab. Um, so first of all, we'll go through and we'll look at all the players, and we've got them grouped into group number quadrant so like i said before this is quadrant a in green b in blue c on the other side of the bracket in purple and d in pink so a b c d so this would be one side of the bracket this would be the other side of the bracket so then what i've got is each player's official world golf rankings their odds to win this week um the average odds of the rest of the group so what that is going to mean essentially um for this is looking at group one Alex Noren, what are the average odds of the rest of the group? So Davis Riley, Scotty Scheffler, Tom Kim, what are their odds? So 44.3. So I did that for each group. I also did that for each quadrant. So Alex Noren, the average odds of all these other players outside of Noren in quadrant A is 69.3. And the reason I did this is because I wanted to compare quadrants. I wanted to pair, compare groups and maybe see if we can maybe find a little bit of an edge um, of possibly uh, groups or quadrants that have maybe some weaker players, maybe an easier path to get in through group stage, get in through to the round of 16, semifinals, and into those finals. Um, so that's the way I looked at that. I've also color coded this so you can see which are the easier, um, which are the better stats for each player. So obviously in this group 16 here, We'll just look at that specifically. Um, we've got Sung JM and Tommy Fleetwood. Um, they have good matchups because Poston and McNeely, obviously their average odds or their odds are 125 to one. So that's going to give them. So that's kind of how I'm looking at that. So if we go down and just look at the average odds of the rest of the group and just looking at groups specifically. So we've got groups, we've got quad. Um, before that, actually, we, I, I put in some stats and I really just wanted to look at strokes gain T to green. I might add some putting and break it down into the individual strokes gain statistics. But for now, I wanted to have a look at, at T to green in the same manner that I just looked at it from the odds, looking at each group, um, each quadrant. Um, so this right here, strokes gain T to green, that is every player's strokes gain T to green from the main tab on the sheet. Now, the main tab on the sheet, looking at those strokes gain T to green, um, that is 90, I think we're up to 98% of this season stats with a 2% weight on last season. So that's each player's T to green. So then we've got the average T to green of the rest of the group. So, you know, looking at Scotty Scheffler specifically in group one, um, the the T to green numbers are the lowest for him, obviously, um, you know, looking at the average of Tom Kim, Davis, Riley and Alex Norn. So that's how we're looking at that. Um, so going down there, we can see that this quadrant B has a lot of players um, that have some favorable matchups and looking at it from the average T to green compared to the, re you know, of the rest of the quadrant. So again, I'm going to explain that um, looking at, let's just look at Alex Norn. He's at the top. So th what this means is 0 0.840 is the average tee to green of all these players, Davis Riley down to Victor Perez in quadrant A, um, which again is looking at, um, let's see if I can get it up. Yeah, 
which again, quadrant A is all in green here. So to get through, these would be the guys that you would look to to get through to the semifinals here or, or here possibly. Um, so what that is telling me is that this is all green here in this quadrant B. So the matchups in quadrant B, the players in quadrant B, all this collection of players, their strokes gain T to green is nowhere near as good as the players in quadrant A. So you've got a lot of good players in quadrant A. As you can see, looking at these T to green numbers, there's a lot of players that are, you know, over half a stroke gain per round, uh, strokes gain T to green, where there's a lot of negatives in here. Um, even C, there's a lot of negatives. And then quadrant D is quite easy as well. So quadrant D and B, according to strokes gain T to green. So then I put that all together over here. So you've got groups one through 16, the average official world golf rankings in each group, the average odds, in each group, the average strokes gain T to green in each group. And then I've also got it into quadrant, average official world golf rankings, odds and T to green in each group. So just looking at this overall, if you wanna break it down more, come into the players, but specifically group 14 is the easiest in terms of official golf ranking, second easiest in terms of odds, and fourth easiest in terms of strokes gain T to green of the players in that group. So group 14 is a good one to target. Group 14 also falls into quadrant D. Quadrant D is also the easiest in terms of official golf rankings. Official world golf rankings. There, we'll spell that right. Um, it is second, or it is best in terms of odds and second best in terms of strokes gained tee to green. So quadrant D and group 14 specifically, um, according to the stats, the odds and the official world golf rankings is the best path to get through. So if we go look at quadrant D, um, definitely high on quadrant D because of that data. Um, one player that stands out to me right away is going to be Tyrrell Hatton. Um, looking at the average odds towards the rest of the group, he is number one. So he has the easiest group according to the average odds of the rest of his group, uh, 131. That's gonna update as well. These odds are from last night. So I'm gonna update these again uh, today and then probably again later tonight as well. So these numbers are all going to change. You will see this show up in the main um, match play cheat sheet, uh, this tab. And again, it is called, I think it was group and quad research tab. Um, so then again, with Tyrrell Hatton, um, average odds of the rest of the quadrant. Um, he is number two, sorry, number three in terms of the best matchup in terms of the whole rest of the quadrant. Uh, you got Xander Shoffley, 95-1. Uh, Rory McIlroy, 95.7. So maybe getting one, your, you know, in terms of building your bracket out now, after that information that we just looked at, uh, group 14, quadrant D, that is right down here. So that's kind of one that we identified. Um, I really like Tyrrell Hatton there. That's probably a spot where I'm just going to take him, you know, and let's just say go, I have him going right to the semifinals. Let's say, say right now we've got him going right to the finals. That's our first pick that we've identified. So I'm going to build it out that way. I'm going to put him in my DraftKings lineups. So then when I get to the end now, because um, we've identified kind of this quadrant D as being the easiest, if you go and you find your one player from here and your one player from here and your one player from this quadrant, and you've got all that figured out. Now you need those final two players. Um, one of those places I'll probably go to is up in here in group six or 11, someone that's going to meet Hatton kind of in these quarterfinals. And then I'm going to go to the other side of the group and just with what we identified here of A and B, you know, on the other side, we like B a little bit more in terms of the strokes gain T to green for sure. And then it's, it's pretty close in terms of the odds and stuff, but the strokes gain T to green is a wild difference compared to A. So this maybe is one where I maybe skip over Scotty Scheffler um, up here. And then I start coming down. Um, oh, sorry. Actually, let me go back to that. We are looking at quadrant B. So that's groups 5, 12, 13, 4, and 12. Um, so that's down here. So maybe my sixth player, my second extra player outside of the players are going to make the semifinal are going to come from 5, 12, 13, or 4 um, in that group there. And then I'll just kind of break it down more. So that's just, I wanted to go and analyze it a little bit more after the groups came out just to kind of see if there was maybe a path of least resistance for some of these players. Um, so that's kind of a quick overview of that um, extra research that I did. If you have any questions, make sure to meet, uh, hit me up in Discord, either in the PGA channel or DM me. Um, you can also hit me up on Twitter, like I said, at Jaeger underscore bombs nine on Twitter. Um, we're also on Facebook at Jaeger bombs, fantasy sports, Instagram, same handle at Jaeger bombs, fantasy sports. Um, Discord, you can also get in. You can you if you want to question me, um, maybe talk to me in Discord. You're not a member, like I said, you maybe want to check it out and maybe ask me some questions. Our Discord chat 
to get into our server is free. We have some open channels, some free channels. We have uh, um, free trials throughout the week. We'll give, we'll open up access to certain channels, give those sheets away for free for certain days. So it, it's definitely worth grabbing a free trial. You can DM me then. Um, you can ask me questions. You can also leave a video in, or you can also leave a message in the video below. And please make sure to like and share the video with your friends if you like it. Um, and yeah, leave a comment if you got a question down there as well. Thanks a lot. Uh, I appreciate it. And again, make sure to check back on the sheet for my top picks, which will be highlighted on the main tab of the sheet, as well as the rankings tab will be out as well, kind of ranking my top players one through. I'm probably going to do 16 players in my rankings this week. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, you want those 16 players getting through uh, group stage. So I will do that as well. Thanks a lot and good luck this week, everyone.